Hey everyone, I'm um, just continuing on some of the educational videos around nutrition. So this video is basically a crash course in kind of where we need to focus our attention on when it comes to nutrition and the kind of hierarchy of things that are going to have an effect on body composition. So I'll go through them in order of importance, but um, the number one thing essentially for, for anyone that wants to alter body composition, so if you want to lose fat or build muscle or whatever it may be, it's going to be calorie balance. So what that is, is the amount, the, the end result of the amount of calories you burn and the amount of calories you take in and how, how it weighs up. Um, so you can eat the healthiest foods in the world and be eating perfectly clean and everything like that. But if you're eating too many calories, you're, you're going to build tissue and that can be fat or that can be muscle. There's other factors that will affect that, which we'll go through in a moment. But that's ultimately what's going to happen. And if you take in less than your body needs, you're going to, um, burn tissue or kind of um, you'll be in a calorie deficit and your body will break down tissue and that can be muscle or fat as well but there's other things that affect that which we'll go through so the, we, we're not big on counting calories or pushing that at all in terms of caloric balance because ultimately it's all guesswork we're guessing how much we burn we're guessing how much we take in and if you're if you're really really into it and you're you're checking every single meal that you eat like it's just not a, a good way to be or sustainable way of living. Um, now, if you've if someone hasn't ever used my fitness pal or food tracking app, it's good. It's a good exercise to do for a week or like you know for a week or two to get your head around some of the figures and and see how much you're taking in because when we self report or we can kind of kid ourselves and think that I, I'm only taking in X amount of calories and you could be taking in more. And the other simple way to just check it is if your weight has been going up, you're likely to be in a calorie surplus. And if your weight has been coming down, you're likely to be in a calorie deficit. If your weight is more or less stayed the same, you're basically canceling each other out. So, so your weight's going to stay constant. Um, the thing to remember about it when, when we look at that calorie equation is the two things that are going to affect it are also are going to be exercise and nutrition. So ways that we can put you into a calorie deficit is by making you exercise more so you're burning more calories and by bringing down your total amount of calories from your food. In particular, if we, if we take out certain foods that are really high calories or you know, like if we eat lots of carbs, it's, it's easy to eat a high amount of calories in those things. So we take those out a bit as well. So um, it's not where we focus most of our energy, but it just has to be respected in terms of that calorie balance. Um, no matter what we do after that if, if, if that doesn't add up we're not going to get the results that we want so second to that or the, the second most important thing is going to be our macronutrients and um, so that's going to be our proteins carbs and fats and they're going to be ranked in importance in that order so protein being the most important for body composition carbohydrates being second and then fat so um what that what we're talking about there in terms of macronutrients is the amount that we're getting so ideally we want people taking in like one and a half times their body weight in grams of protein a day so if you weigh 60 kilos you want to be hitting at least 90 grams of protein a day anything from 90 to 120 would be good there so that's going to be um one of the most important things because if you're not taking in protein your body isn't going to build the muscle that you want you're not going to be able to recover from the training and exercise that you do and the other thing is that we store carbohydrates and we store fat in our body. So we can store carbs in the form of glycogen in our muscles and liver. And we store fat as fat on our body. But we don't store protein. So we need a constant supply of protein in our body. So we'll talk about it in nutrient timing. But essentially that's why it's so important that we eat protein in every meal. And you'll start to see our rules or the reason for our rules as I go on. Um, protein is going to be number one. Carbohydrates going to be number two. So carbs, obviously, we've discussed before. They're going to be, um, you know, our, our main for our main source of energy when we're doing like activities or when we rate increase intensity. So like our body wants to burn fat at rest, but we don't let it if we take an excess carbs. So we want to control our carbohydrate intake and match it to our exercise output. So non-training days, we can pull out on the high calorie, high energy carbs, and we will get enough carbs that our body needs from our vegetables and stuff like that so that's why our base is always going to be protein every meal veggies every meal and then add in our high energy carbs when we need them then lastly in terms of macronutrients it's going to be fat and fat is usually once we hit a minimum figure which is a very low figure and um, fat will play a role in our hormones and stuff like that as well but um once we hit a minimum figure for fat it's not it's not a it's not a figure that needs to be 
strictly monitored as much as protein and carbs. And fat is obviously more calories than carbs and fat, but um, generally that will look after itself if we saw protein and carbs, and they're going to be more important for body composition. So then after we've done calorie balance, we've looked at our macronutrients, then the next most important thing is going to be nutrient timing. So this is really important because this is just essentially the timing of the foods that we take in. So obviously the total figures are important, which was the last step, and now it's the timing. So in particular with protein, if we don't take in a steady supply of protein throughout the day, like our body can break down muscle tissue for energy if it has to. So that's why you can see people that go on extreme diets or and you know they just lose muscle mass. Or if someone loses a lot of weight but they lose strength as well, they probably just lost muscle mass. So it's not it's not great um, and like looking at your body and seeing that your body fat changes over time will, will be able to dictate that but um that's why we want a constant supply of protein throughout the body and that's why you can't just eat like 100 grams of protein in one meal your body won't digest it all so it's better to have a constant supply every time you eat and um, similarly with carbohydrates they're going to have more of an of an effect like pre and post exercise than they are if you're having you know, carbs in the morning, but you're not exercising until the evening time. So nutrient timing is going to be another important factor. Um, and then after nutrient timing, once we have that done, so we've three boxes ticked, then you're looking at um, like food composition or just the, the general makeup of the food. So, um, you know, like a chicken or beef or a lean chicken or lean turkey is going to give you more complete proteins than say if you're eating something like a, a chicken nuggets and um, so real versus process and then certain proteins are going to be essential and have all of our amino acids and certain certain fats we can only get through a diet and stuff like that so that's going to have an impact then but we look after that by focusing on whole unprocessed foods constantly um, and, and that kind of eating clean and then the last thing you'd look at then is supplementation which is just going to be taking off any of the other boxes that you're, that you're not already doing with your diet. So, you know, in, in Ireland, we're not going to get a whole lot of sunlight each day, especially as we come in now to the winter. So, like, supplementing with vitamin D is, is going to be recommended. Or, you know, you know, just like our food intake isn't as good as it could be, or the way food is processed and manufactured today, that, like, everyone should probably take a multivitamin and people don't eat enough fish or omega-3 fish oils. And possibly a probiotic for gut health but supplements are literally the last the last piece of the puzzle um, and it's only to supplement with stuff that we either can't get through our diet or your diet isn't isn't it giving you all of those things so essentially um that's the that's the crash course in terms of nutrition for body composition they're the five things that you have to to tick off in that order if you want to be successful and kind of reach the the goals and targets that you have in mind and um, so we have them all pretty much covered in terms of our guidelines for you but um i guess it's good to have the background information on why why it all is that way so any questions uh let me know